We've come to Dearborn, Michigan, where a battle is brewing in the nationwide campaign to ban certain books from public school libraries. Well done. The Dearborn School Board is meeting to announce whether they'll remove a handful of books from their libraries. The books have been at the center of an intense firestorm for months. The fracas over these books is not unlike the fights that have played out at school boards across the country. Culture wars that we tend to associate with white conservative Christians. Our children are being at risk, they're being groomed. Who puts this kind of stuff in schools? It is straight up porn. Public schools have vivid pornography in it, and these cops won't do anything about it. But in Dearborn, an unlikely alliance is formed. The city is over 40% Arab and traditionally votes Democratic, but this largely Muslim community also holds strong conservative social views. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you all. The two books that have drawn the most controversy here, This Book is Gay and Flamer, are both about teens struggling with their sexuality. You worried about the gay people? No problem. We're not worried about the gay people. We're worried about our children. Schools are no place to teach children about com the complexity of sexuality, gender identification, or sexually explicit material. Mike Hashem has been one of the most vocal figures in the fight. Many of our parents and the, the students' parents do not uh, understand what's going on in the schools. Those types of books, when you read one page, you're already disgusted at it. This teaches you to go against your parents, teaches you to go against your own self. Talk me through it from the beginning. When and how were you first made aware of this? So obviously we've seen what was going around in the country mm -hmm. uh, at different school boards and things like that. We'd never expected these types of books to be in our schools. Um, up until a, I'd say a hero came, came up, her name is Stephanie Butler. God is here to protect us and I can say my heart is now full. Seeing the community come together in the name of protecting our children. Stephanie Butler is a local realtor who saw what was happening across the country and became outraged after looking into the books in her daughter's school library. She was the one who originally filed a complaint about the books and rallied the community against them. The, the sexualizing of our children between the books, the um, assignments. If you would investigate and see all the things that I've seen and the amount of our kids that are turning that way, it's turning not what way? Turning, you know, gay and all this stuff. So basically, the government wants your kids from birth until through through college. So they can indoctrinate them, make them think the way they want them to, like everything's normal. And it sounds like a hell of a good conspiracy theory. And I wish it was. I really do. Do you feel like this struggle that you're in the middle of, do you think it pertains to conservative Islamic values as well? Is there an overlap there? Is that why this oh, coalition a, is happening? Yeah, there's a huge overlap. A lot of our values are the same. And these people from across the various ethnic and religious Eth yep. uh, communities in, yep. was that surprising to you? Um, no, only because I live here in Dearborn, so I know like what their values are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it was surprising to a lot of people. I was painted as a white Christian nationalist, basically that was leading all these ethnic people off a cliff, insinuating that these people are not educated and they don't know how to think for themselves. And I'm not saying you're leading them off a cliff, but mm -hmm. do you are you a leader in this college movement? Oh, absolutely. Uh, in the South End of Dearborn, it's predominantly Yemeni, and they call me the mother of the South End. One of the biggest sources of tension is a single page in the book Flamer, where some kids are playing a prank on the main character, pretending to masturbate into a bottle and telling him that the person who doesn't climax has to drink it. Nothing explicit is shown. Some of the key figures in the fight are a little fuzzy on the details. So these books we're talking about, how do you have access to them? We know the titles and uh, we did our research. And then you read the books? Uh, partially. Um, I don't want to read the whole book, you know, just to... Why? It's, it's just a moral thing with me. I found the part that you guys are talking about, but like, I'm having trouble 
like seeing. So read this part. All right. We're each busting a load into this bottle. If you don't come, you have to drink it. Ha 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 ha. The context of it, what does that you refer to? You don't know the context because you haven't read the page before or the page after. But what does that re refer to? They're hinting. That's part of the joke. Have your, you know, kids, have your kids read these books? I don't have any kids. Oh, you don't have kids. I don't have kids. Um, I plan on having kids. Yeah. If you had kids, do you think this book would make your kids drink cum? My kids, first of all, will not be reading those types of books. Second of all, when someone is 18, they could do whatever they want. Drink as much cum as they want. Whatever they want. <sighs> How is this representing the LGBT youth community? Do they want to be represented as a bunch of like sexual deviants? The media specialists have completed the initial review process of the following books that have been formally challenged. This book is gay and all boys aren't blue. Both were found to be appropriate for high school students. The board did not rule on Flamer at this meeting. They later found that it was also appropriate for high school students. The decision came as a relief for teachers like Jane Mazza. I'm so tired of people saying that teachers are indoctrinating kids and that we're pedophiles and that we're peddling smut. We're just trying to teach and get these kids where they need to be. There's 1,800 teachers in our union. And every day they come to work and they work so hard and they spend their own money and they give every inch of their soul to, this, to these kids in this community. And to have them attack like this, it, it, it just rips my heart. I'm going to burn this book and then you can reorder it a hundred times and then parents can have their kids check it out. You're actually going to burn the library book? Well, no, but they're not getting it back. That's the one about coming in a bottle and drinking it and, you know, masturbation and this and And that. also about saving someone who's trying to commit suicide and how it was important. And he was yeah, a Boy Scout. Well, they, they can do that without... He was without, a Boy Scout and an altar boy. they can do that without the sex. He was a, a Boy Scout and Why an altar boy. Why do the kids boy? need to be represented like that? You're this, picking Amy. one page. Yeah, well, well funny you call us minutes, when you... Take your 15 minutes of fame, Okay, honey. honey, white Nazi, remember? We helped you, Jane. She's the teacher union president. She's a bitch. So what's next? The what's next is uh, we plan on doing a school board recall and we have filed a lawsuit against the school uh, under the, the guise of concerned parents. I mean, our ultimate goal is to like stop sexualizing the kids and just let them be kids. So you guys have had some challenging couple of months, there's been some pretty loud school board meetings. Sure. How did all this start? So there's been concerns for the books that are in our libraries. I mean, we have 500,000 books in our libraries. It's probably the first time we've heard the concern brought up. So parents have been coming to the board meetings to express those concerns uh, on both sides, to be honest. Some books contain um, tough subjects. They deal with issues of gender, of sexuality, and things like that. Why should these issues and subjects be available at all to kids in school? Why do we need them? We are a public school district, okay? We're welcoming for students from a variety of ethnicities. Um, you know, we welcome uh, different genders. We accommodate our students. And in those nominal groups, we, we want students to be able to um, you know, I identify themselves as well. You want kids to feel welcome in the district, and so you want them to have access to that material. Books that describe their experience. Yeah, th that they can identify with. Some people might say uh, that it's not a book's place or it's not the school's place to teach my child about these issues, about sexuality and these sort of things. These are things you talk to with your parents or your religious leaders or people in the community, what would you tell them? So I'd say they have the opt-out. You can opt-out, no problem. But we have other parents that say, no, we want this material for my kids. What about my kids that are in those nominal groups? We want that material for them. Why should they be deprived? What we've said is you can make a decision on your child, but you don't get a right to make a decision on every other child in the district. I understand that parents have a concern and we're listening. But it has been a huge distraction. Some of the civility has gone out the window. But what about the meeting. people who don't know you, people who 
you know, assume that you're peddling pornography through the school libraries. I, I mean, I would just say that they're misinformed and, you know, get informed then. What is the importance of not getting rid of books just because a certain group is asking for it? Why should we, if not resist, then at least think about why we should keep these books? I mean, I think it's a slippery slope. You got to be careful. Where do you draw the line um, and where does it end? That's why we have to have a process that is fair and that is reviewed and is followed to make sure that the books are appropriate and to make sure that we're not inappropriately pulling books off the shelves. I mean, where does it end? Where, where, where would you stop? I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.